Hello, my name is Ash Tarek and you are about to listen to an interview that I done for Machinima UK quite a while ago with Molly from Chucklefish about their game Starbound, which is actually coming out for beta release on the 4th of December this year. So this interview was done probably back in mid to late September and here we go. Enjoy. So good evening, Molly. Or oh, late afternoon it is for you. <laughs> Hi. Um, so we're going to talk about Starbound this evening uh, and start off with a general idea of what Starbound is. Okay, um, Starbound is a sandbox game. It takes place in space and you can travel throughout space, um, throughout the universe in a ship. You start out as one of six, soon seven races who've just fled from their homeland for one reason or another and they crash land on a planet and your first goal is to survive and then from there you can pretty much do whatever you want. We really want Starbound to have like a really rich backstory, a really interesting backstory. And I'm not talking about something that's like dry like 60,000 <laughs> just like boring backstory crap but like we want the story to be there for people to experience if they want to experience it and they just ignore if they don't want to. Mm -hmm. um, a bit like games like the Elder Scrolls, where you can go around and do whatever you want. You don't have to know really anything about the world that you're in, but you can if you want to. It's there, and it, it's engrossing if you want it to be. So how did the idea of Starbound come around? What were the uh, inspirations? Um, the inspirations were a lot of retro games, and the charm and the feel of those, as well as block-based genre and how much everybody really loves that, and the creative freedom that that gives people to make these really amazing like buildings and towns and things. And it's really interesting to see that, but we also wanted to expand upon that and have it so it's not just a game about creating things, but also experiencing a story and making your own stories and sort of enhancing the multiplayer experience that you get in other sandbox games. How does multiplayer work? Will it be that a host has one ship and everyone has the same ship, or will it be multiple ships but you can say like there'll be a group on one planet and another group can go to another, or are you under that one party. Um, each player has their own ship. You can party up and go to other people's ships. So like say the leader of a party can have a bunch of people join up on their ship and uh, group up, but there can be other people on other ships as well. You mentioned that you plan to support modding or allowing players to add items into the game. Yes. Um, if so, like how how is that going to work exactly? I mean, say if someone wants to create a potato gun, then they can make it themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, it's actually, really easy to add anything to the game. I mean, it's as easy as if the object that you're making doesn't require extra code in order to make it work. A lot of things can be scripted in Lua, so if you want to add a new object, it's extremely easy. I mean, I'm not a coder by any means, but I've added a lot of objects to the game just by configuring these JSON files, actually, and just kind of throwing them in there. So pretty much anybody can do it, give them a tutorial or two. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of people out there that are already scheming <laughs> ideas, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> there are there are a ton of people on our forums who are already like making mods even though the game's not out. It's kind of amazing. <laughs> There's such a strong community behind us yeah. as well. I was going to mention later on obviously that on your website um, you have frequent blog updates about mm -hmm. the game and like the community is so active and you guys are so yeah. active within the community as well and it's something that today is it's just amazing to see really. It's, it's great to see like a developer that hands on with their fan base, really. Thanks! I and mean, it's really encouraging to have so much support within the community. Um, we get a lot of emails of support and everything, it's, just, it's really nice. Um, yeah, they're extremely active and they have been for ages and they've waited quite a while, um, <laughs> even since just the pre-order for the game to come out, they've been really patient. <laughs> Obviously, you've got uh, the goals that you've set on the website mm -hmm. and one of those, like I said in the i49 interview, one of those was the starter pets, or the mm -hmm. first one. So, um, with starter pets, what have you implemented so far, and is there a pet that you'd personally love to put in the game? Um, we haven't actually implemented them yet. We are aiming to, but I don't know if it'll be a beta feature or not, mm. um, just because we're aiming to get the beta out as soon as possible, and it's not quite... it's not essential. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as pets that I would really like to see in the game, I would really just like to see a pug. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> High five. I just want a pug. <laughs> yeah, I want one too. <laughs> oh dear. 
warmth is a very elaborate mechanic. Obviously, I saw on the stream that there was multiple people yeah. dying after uh, freezing to death. And yes. I was just wondering if you could talk about how that mechanic works. Okay, so essentially planets will have a different level of cold depending on a lot of factors. Just how cold the temperature might be based on the biome. So if you're on a snowy biome, you're going to get cold kind of fast. Putting on clothes like armor and stuff that increases warmth will help with that as well as being in proximity to a fire or a torch or anything warm. And being indoors also helps with that. So if you have any sort of shelter at all from like the, the wind, then you're pretty good. And obviously once the cold meter gets to zero, you die. But Generally, it should happen pretty slowly, unless you're on like a terrible, terrible ice planet. But yeah, we still have a lot of balancing to do as far as, as how fast people die and freeze and starve to death. Okay. One thing I just want to say there in regards to starving to death, mm -hmm. how come the glitch can starve to death? Well, <laughs> the glitch backstory involves, without giving too much away, the glitch backstory involves them mostly not really knowing that they are not human. Okay. They think they need to eat, so they need to eat. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. So going back to uh, the planets and stuff, um, will there be such things as natural disasters that can happen on planets? As far as like tornadoes and yeah. like SimCity kind of stuff like that? Um, not right now, no. That's not currently in the plans. Maybe something we can look forward to? <laughs> Maybe, because it would be kind of cool. As as it was mentioned before, um, I think you're, you're planning to add asteroids, which led me to believe, like, will there be an outer planet experience? Obviously, besides the ship, like, will there be asteroids and moons and other things for us to explore? Yeah, there's actually moon planets. Um, so when you go to the star map and you're looking at planets, you can also find moons that you can land on, as well as... Um, as far as asteroids go, if you manage to reach like high enough, which is really, really high up on, on the planet, if you climb that far or something, you'll reach an asteroid layer. All right. And so that you can you can kind of grapple onto asteroids and, and jump to them and climb to them or whatever and maybe find things up there. I'll make a I'll make a table tower. <laughs> <laughs> we had a good time with that. <laughs> So currently there are 10 tiers in the game, mm -hmm. um, presumably scales with difficulty as you progress. Mm -hmm. And uh, what are your ideas for the end game content? So once you reach that last tier, what are your plans? Um, I can't say too much about tiers, especially top tiers right now. Just as far as um, difficulty, although just tier 10 will obviously have the most awesome gear and things that you can build and and but I, I can't say a whole lot more than that without just being very spoilery okay well in addition to all of this uh creepers yes. <laughs> are in starbound so how did this come about are you guys a fan of minecraft and just decided to ask notch about adding them in basically i mean we went to a few different developers and we just asked them hey can we put this thing from your game in our game because it would be funny and they said yes <laughs> so um yeah, I mean, you know about the creepers. Uh, we have a few others. I don't really want to say. It, it might it might be public knowledge, but I don't really want to say what they are. No, yeah, that that was going to be my next question. <laughs> okay. Like, if there are any more little are, references yeah. to any games or. Yeah, as far as references, we've kind of kept it to, or I've kind of kept it to, item descriptions because I like to stick references to things in my item descriptions when I write them. <laughs> All right, fair enough. <laughs> so Starbound has a beautiful soundtrack, and it's available for what purchase along with all of the tiers that you can get from your website. Um, do you want to quickly go over the other tiers that are available um, and extra benefits that they have? Sure. I mean, you can get the soundtrack with our first pixel tier, which is just $15. And then with the silver tier is an extra $5 and you get a forum badge that you can, I mean, if you're a member of our forum, then we have like a badge system where like little achievements get you badges. So you get a little thing that says donor next to your name with a penguin. <laughs> For $45, we have the gold tier, and you get to name an NPC, and you also get sort of a higher tier badge. With naming an NPC, you just kind of type in a name, and assuming that it's not like ass face or, <laughs> or something, or something copyrighted, then it gets added to random NPC name generation. We have diamond tier, which is all of that, plus you get your name in the credits for special contributors. Uh, platinum tier, which is $500, which um, has sold out already. And you get to design a hat <laughs> <laughs> with all of the other things. And then Solarium tier is $1,000, uh, which is almost sold out too. And uh, you get to design a weapon that we put in the game. Impervium tier finally is 2000 and you get an in-game statue of yourself. Oh, wow. That's cool. For our viewers that are listening currently, 
where can they go to keep up to date with your progress? All right, um, we have playstarbound.com, which you can go to see daily updates. You can visit our Facebook and you can visit our Twitter, which is twitter.com slash starboundgame. You can always visit our forums and IRC channel, which are both linked on our main page, playstarbound.com. And we are kind of always there um, answering questions and talking to people. So it's easy to catch us there. I'll make sure to put all of those links in the description below as well. So awesome. everyone can get easy access. I definitely can't wait for this game to come out. <laughs> I'm glad. Um, and thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for interviewing me. <laughs> no problem. Thank you very much. And I will speak to you soon.